So I'm starting this. our bob because <laughs> I don't think I can do anything about that it's already warmed up it's warmed up so that ain't the problem it could be too the way the slides were done because um,
got a hook on and get it now, man, because I did a third Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that God has created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May God's grace sustain you lovingly in the palm of God's hand today. Welcome to MCC Quad Cities, where it's our focus on loving God and also loving one another. I extend the gift of God's powerful hope to you today. Please rise as you are able, whether in body or spirit, and join us in our opening song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is.
to our first time guest, returning friends and those watching here online. Let's give them all a big round of applause. At this time we share the peace of Christ. Would you please turn to your neighbor and share with them a sign of God's peace, whatever you choose. <laughs> And may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Thank you for worshiping with us today. For those online, welcome. We're glad that you could make it with us today. In person attenders, please fill out the blue participation card and place an offering plate that will be passed later in our service. You are important to us and to the world. MCC Quad Cities continues to be the church no matter what happens in the world, and there's a lot happening. Praise, Praise God. God. Please provide your email so that we can keep you up to date and share our weekly prayers, events, and inspiration. Thank you for supporting this faith community. Your giving matters as we tear down walls and build up love. Thank you for whatever you can do. And I believe Kathy has an announcement. And while she's on her way up here, whoops. Yes. Technical difficulties. While she's on her way up here. <laughs> uh, we do need help after service. If anyone could please stay and help us. We're just putting things in boxes. That's all you have to do is just put some things in boxes, okay? So if you can help with that after the service, please, please, please stay. We do need your assistance. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have so little left. If you each would just do one box, DAV is coming in the morning for the pick up all the what's left. And, but as you can see, there's hardly anything left. But we are very tired. So please do mm -hmm. a box for us. So first of all, I'm here to tell you about the rummage sale. Uh, it was successful be, be, beyond our wildest dreams. We've never had such a successful sale. Um, Julie, we have to especially thank Julie Ross, who is here, Linda Van Hess, and Lucia Dryansky, my partners in crime. Um, <laughs> these, these three women are all friends of mine. They're the queens of the rummage sale. Uh, everybody who came in this, this weekend said we've never seen a nicer, bit more organized, better rummy cell ever. It's because we have been, we rocked the rummy cells. I also have to especially thank Elle Whitaker, Angel and Cody. We could not have done this without them. Marsha, Sarah, Robert. Our pastor spent way more time helping than I had hoped he would have to. Um, the day of the sale, Carl Feaster, Don Faust, Jen, uh, Jen Hansen, Jeff Transau, and Michelle um, were incredibly, incredibly helpful. We couldn't have done that. <laughs> so, if you saw the room of stuff, you realize we had a lot of interesting things, much of it priced at a quarter and 50 cents, and we made $3,100. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, we have a couple of announcements. Tuesday is Second Tuesday Dining Out. We're going to the Riverfront Grill in Rock Island. It's on the Rock River, not the Mississippi. <laughs> um, and that's at 6 o'clock. Um, also, uh, tonight, tonight is Open Mic Night. And Mona has lined up some extraordinary talent. We have comedians, singers, poets. Right? Lined up for tonight. We have a DJ. Um, it's all going to take place in the social hall. Um, and it's $5 admission, and then there will be food that's, that's being catered. So there will be food available for purchase, food by Mexican soap. So that sounds like a lot of fun. I want everybody to please come and participate if you're able. Um, and then the Pride Parade is next Sunday. Uh, 
Saturday. Saturday. Next Saturday, sorry. It starts at 4. Um, if you're going to walk in the prairie, we need all the people we can who's able to walk to be walking with us. Um, there will be some room in the back of Scott Cameron's pickup truck for those who can't walk but still want to participate. Um, so, yeah, be there early if you're going to participate in the parade at 3. Um, but the parade itself starts at 4, and then it leads into Bass Street Landing Pride at 5. So, it's going to be a fun time. Thank you. And now our ushers will come forward for the giving of gifts. together to grow in faith and service. Join us together as your children to learn, to remember, and to share what we know. Calm minds and open our hearts to receive all that we need to hear today. We pray for those on our prayer list, especially those who are ill, seeking meaningful work, and those who are seeking yet shelter. We pray for those who are imprisoned by past choices, those who seek answers, and those are just the beginning to come out in the complicated world we have today. Hold close those who've experienced recent tragedies and those who suffered the loss of a loved one. Grant us patience with ourselves and with each other. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the great abundance of our nation. Be shared with those who are sick and are vulnerable. We pray that your will for your children be reflected in the courts and in our communities. Grant us the strength to stay on paths of hope and lift us up when we begin to tire. May compassion and connectedness grow deep roots within us. We pray in gratitude for the gift of ordinary days where we are safe and have homes to go to. We are grateful for those who are close to us. May we live this day with our eyes wide open to all that we have been forgiven. 
And now, friends, here and at home, for what else shall we pray? Prayers of Thanksgiving and safe travels for the young man out of the blue who showed up at the uh, excuse me, rest stop and uh, helped me yesterday. Continue praying for the work of Charlie. Nana, Jerry, Justin, the family. Test results. Prayers of thanks for blessings received. Amen. Prayers for, for the family and friends of the Pulse shooting six years ago today. Prayers for the family and friends of the Pulse shooting six years ago today. Prayers for the Friends, miracles, and strength. Oh God, your love for us sets us free. May your spirit flow through us and touch others with kindness. Amen. Amen. Amen.
verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able. Hear this good news reading from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. The words of Jesus. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, it will guide you into all the truth. For the Spirit will not speak on its own, but will speak whatever it hears, and will declare to you the things that are to come. God will glorify me, because God will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Creator has is mine. For this reason, I said that God will take what is mine and declare it to you. Please be seated. strawberries that he can't handle. He needs people to come and pick strawberries and, and take plants if you want them. So Bob, raise your hand so people know who you are. If you want some strawberries or strawberry plants, see Bob Rinderconnect. And I want us to give a warm welcome and thank you to our guest pianist, Avery. Took a well deserved day off. <laughs> so I just got back from, from the ER and they said that I'll be all right after a couple of days on pain relief. But I just thought I'd warn you the Dyson Ball Cleaner is misleadingly named. <laughs> there was a couple that was always fighting, and one yelled from the bedroom asking, do you ever get a shooting pain across your body like somebody's got a voodoo doll of you and they're stabbing it? Yeah. The other replied, no. The first one yelled back, how about now? <laughs> Sometimes the pain we bear is our own fault. Other times it is inflicted upon us. Either way, we just as soon not have to bear it. And yet we do bear it. Let us pray for strength. Holy God, who suffers with us and bears our unbearable pains with us, grant us grace and strength to endure whatever we must endure. But God, a little less pain would be better. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus was compassionate, kind. How could Jesus possibly tell them that he was to be tortured and cruelly executed? And then there was the future of each of them, whose fate for all of them was also to be a gruesome death. <coughs> Tragic deaths are unfathomable, 
unbearable. And yet, and yet, we survive. The disciples did survive Jesus' death and resurrection, making them perfect examples of what Paul describes in our reading from Romans today. They could boast in their sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. And well, you try to preach that. Doesn't that just sound great? I want to sign up for some of that. Or suffering. We could have classes on character. The truth is, we have all been to those classes. We have all lived through some hell on earth. Yikes. And yet our lives are in many ways nothing but a class on character. I think that's a really good way for us to reflect on our journeys. That our journeys, our lifelong journeys have been a class on building character. Whether we learn from it or not is completely up to us. How we handle the things that come along is only up to us. A couple of thoughts on our faith today to help us put things in perspective. First, the hard truth is that life does have some pretty unbearable things in store for all of us. Pain. Hey, a broken heart, death of a loved one, disease, depression, anxiety, trauma. No one escapes pain. We wish we could. We'd like God to just take all that pain away. But that's not what God is meant to do for us. On Saturday, Jeff and I went to the March for Our Lives. And it was really difficult hearing the stories, particularly the story of, of one survivor of what could have been much more tragic than it was in North High School. And the effect that that had on her, because the man pulled it down, he pointed it at everyone, waved it in the air, pointed it at his teacher, teacher acted valiantly. Because of the teacher, nothing bad happened that day. She got him to, got the shooter, potential shooter to go into the hallway and give her his gun. Teachers should not have to put up with that. We give them enough to do as it is. So two of the, two of the call and responses that we did Saturday, one is what do we hear the response is, thoughts and prayers, and what do we need? Policy and change. Six years since the Pulse nightclub shooting. And I can't even count the number of mass shootings since. Let us take a moment of silence and just be with that pain for a moment and honor the pain endured by those victims and their families. Christ, 
who crashes their pity party and messes everything up in a way that only an incarnated and resurrected God can. I want you to notice that the Bible does not say, and when they had repented from what complete asses they were, and when they had perfected their faith and the purity of their doctrine, and when they had finally become good people, then they were worthy of being visited by Jesus. No. No. As I said, Jesus will have none of that. Our God is beyond our ability to, to fathom and compassion and understanding. Jesus took people as they were, full of fear, and I suspect a lot of shame for the way they'd acted. But it takes more than locked doors and low self-esteem to keep Jesus out. In fact, when we are at the point in life where our failings and shortcomings are so unfiltered, when we are at the point in life when we have blown it completely, when we're so undeniably aware of our need for God's grace, it's unbearable times. And that's when Jesus comes to us and says, my child, don't be afraid of what I have already defeated. Because God takes all our failings and exchanges them for grace and peace. God says, you are mine now, and so is all that busted down junk in your life. Sometimes we listen and hear that voice. Other times we're stubborn and we refuse to acknowledge the presence of God that is with us. We need to listen and be attentive to God's spirit. So Jesus bars us into the fear and locks doors of our fragile humanity and shows us the very wounds of God. Wounds that bear witness to the crazy, beautiful love of God for us all just for some, for screw-ups, not the perfect. Jesus resurrected was not a glorified, squeaky clean, shiny, resurrected Jesus. Don't believe the paintings. <laughs> Nowhere in our text does it say that after the resurrected, Jesus finally looked like a proper God. You know, all cleaned up and halo in place. Nope. Here is a God with holes in his hands and a wound in his side as if to say, oh, take me, take me as I am. The length to which God will go to welcome us makes things terrible. But Jesus doesn't stop there. Jesus makes sure that we remind each other of these same magical things. Like that our failures, mistakes, and wrongs are forgiven. Like that we have time to start over always. God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, loves you as you are. When I declare to you the forgiveness of sins in the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, I mean all of them, all of your sins, not just some of them, that you have to hang on to and keep them as a burden on your back and makes your face go like this. God takes you as you are, all of them. Stephen Charleston writes, I do not know the birthplace of war in the human heart, I do not know why there is such cruelty in the human mind. Why do we hurt one another? Why do we not yet know how to share? I cannot understand it, much less explain it. I only know that it is there. For like you, I see its evidence everywhere. And I will oppose it everywhere. Wherever evil may roam, I will be there to confront it with love. Whenever I can, wherever I can, however I can. That's 
That's what we're called to do. That's who we're called to be. Which brings me to my second point. Through faith, hope, and love, all things are possible. Amen. Reverend Jim Taylor wrote this paraphrase of Psalm 104, so beautifully reminding us of the impossibilities that nevertheless happen daily all around us. Millions of species, billions of galaxies, Numbers become meaningless chains of zeros. The more we explore the universe, the more amazing, the more astonishing becomes the complex unity of our relationships. Just because we cannot see things does not mean they do not exist. Unaided, we cannot see beneath the surface of the ocean where life teems in myriad forms. Without a microscope, we cannot see the life teeming in a drop of water. Macro and micro, astro and nano, all in their own way, warp the fabric of space-time and connect us to our creator and to all things. The loss of any element changes the equation, tilts the equilibrium, forces permutations and combinations to reorder themselves. We are at once diminished and born anew. So today let us rejoice in a welcoming smile, in the dew on a sunny morning, in the discovery of a species, a particle, an idea. Let our hearts sing and dance like the quantum packets of energy whose vibration forms the mountains, the trees, the stars, and us. All of us and all connected. May our awareness of our interconnectedness raise our threshold of awe for the life that breathes in us and into us. And for that original flame of hope that burns brightly within us, that sometimes seems to be down to the last embers, but it's still there, needing to be kindled. And so it is with all of our unbearable burdens, that in fact, we nevertheless bear them. We bear them sometimes with grace and dignity, and at other times with messy tears and screaming fits. And we find once again that somehow all things are possible through this amazing grace that is ours to claim. With God's grace, we start by doing what's necessary. Then we do what's possible, and suddenly, or sometimes eventually, we are doing the impossible. And you'll find you can get there more easily through the power of relationship, connection, community.
let us go to God and ask God to remove anything that keeps you from communion, connection with God, creation, or your brothers and sisters. <coughs> let us pray. Lord, may we travel through life with curiosity rather than judgment. May we continue to find the magic of each precious moment. Draw us now in the Spirit's tether as together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator, in heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the good news of Jesus the Christ, the rebel, the troublemaker, the wounded God. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, hey, Eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to his friends, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. Most holy, awesome God, we remember you with these simple elements of fruit of the field and fruit of the vine in the many and various ways in which we understand and celebrate them in our diversity or fail to understand them at all. May they be soul food for our spiritual journeys. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. All are welcome to partake of what is here for you. This is God's table, free to all. You don't need to be a member of this church or any church. My ushers and helpers would please come forward at this time.